John Angelo, Jr. Gotti, born February 14, 1964, is an American former mobster who was acting boss of the Gambino crime family from 1992 to 1999 after his father, John J. Gotti, was sent to prison. Jr. himself was in prison for racketeering in 1999. Between 2004 and 2009, Gotti was a defendant in four racketeering trials, which all ended in mistrials. In January 2010, federal prosecutors announced that they would no longer seek to prosecute Gotti for those charges. He has been referred to as Teflon Jr. for evading conviction like his father. Early life Gotti was born in the Queens borough of New York City on February 14, 1964, to Italian American mobster. John J. Gotti and Victoria de Giorgio Gotti, whose father was of Italian descent, and mother was of half Italian half Russian ancestry. Gotti was raised in a two-story house in Howard Beach, New York, with his four siblings, which include sisters Victoria Gotti, and Angel, and brothers Frank and Peter. Angelo Ruggiero was his godfather and middle namesake, whom he and his siblings considered an uncle. Gotti attended New York Military Academy in his youth. Got after graduating school, Gotti's father helped him start a trucking business, Samson Trucking Company, and after the business failed, helped him get a position in the Carpenters Union. Leadership of the Gambino Crime Family and Imprisonment According to federal prosecutors, Gotti was inducted into the Gambino crime family on Christmas Eve 1988. According to fellow mobster Michael DeLeonardo, initiated in the same night, Gravano held the ceremony to keep Gotti from being accused of nepotism. He was named a Copa Regime captain in 1990 and is believed to be the youngest capo in the Gambino family's history. In April 1992, his father, John J. Gotti, received a life sentence for racketeering and related offenses. His father asserted his prerogative to retain his title as boss until his death or retirement, with his brother Peter and his son Gotti Jr. relaying orders on his behalf. Remembering how his father had been brought down by FBI bugs, Gotti adopted a more secretive way of doing business. He discussed mob business mainly through walk talks or conversations held while walking alongside trusted capos. He also tried to pose as a legitimate businessman. However, several of his button men didn't think much of him, thinking he was incompetent. He was not nearly as good a negotiator as his father had been, and the Gambinos lost out on several disputes with the other families. The Genovese family was so unimpressed with Gotti that it refused to deal with him at all. In 1995, Charles Carneglia and John Allied were involved in a major conspiracy to murder Gotti. In a 1997 search of the basement of a property owned by Gotti, the FBI found a typed list of the names of the made members of his organization, as well as $348,700 in cash, a list of the guests who attended his wedding, along with the dollar amount of their wedding gifts, totaling more than $350,000 and two handguns. Also found was a list of several men who were inducted into other families in 1991 and 1992. A long-standing rule in the New York Mafia calls for prospective wise guys to be vetted by the other families before being inducted. However, normally these lists are destroyed almost as soon as the inductions take place. The discovery enraged Gotti's father as well as the other bosses, since it put dozens of other mafiosi at risk of government scrutiny. The episode earned him the nickname, Dumbfella, in the New York media. By 1998, when he was indicted on racketeering charges under the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, Gotti Jr. was believed to be the acting boss of the family. Many of the charges related to attempts to extort money from the owners and employees of Scores, an upscale strip club in Manhattan. According to the indictment, the Gambinos had forced the owners of Scores to pay $1 million over a six-year period in order to stay in business, with Gotti's share of the money totaling $100,000.
In addition to the list seized in the 1997 raid, prosecutors obtained transcripts of prison conversations in which Gotti Jr. received advice from his father on how to run the family. Faced with overwhelming evidence, and against his father's wishes, Gotti Jr. pleaded guilty and was sentenced to six years and five months imprisonment in 1999. He had also given testimonial information against other mobsters, such as Allied. Federal prosecutors say his uncle, Peter Gotti, became head of the Gambino organization after Gotti Jr. was sent to prison, and is believed to have formally succeeded his brother shortly before Gotti Sr.'s death in June 2002. Gotti Jr.'s indictment had brought stress on his parents' marriage. His mother, up to that point, unaware of her son's involvement in the Mafia, blamed her husband for ruining her son's life and threatened to leave him unless he allowed Gotti Jr. to leave the mob. 2004 Racketeering and Kidnapping Charges in 2004 Months before he was released from prison, Gotti was charged in an 11-count racketeering indictment which included an alleged plot to kidnap Curtis Lewa, founder of the Guardian Angels, as well as securities fraud, extortion and loan sharking. A radio talk show host for WABC, Sliwa had allegedly angered the family by denouncing the elder Gotti as public enemy number one on his show. During the trial, two former associates, Michael DeLeonardo and Joseph D'Angelo testified against Gotti. Through his attorney Jeffrey Lichtman, Gotti admitted that he had been involved in the Gambino crime family in the 1990s, and had even been slated to lead the organization after his father was sent to jail in 1992, but claimed he had left criminal life behind after his conviction in 1999. Three juries eventually deadlocked on the charges, the last in 2006, and federal prosecutors decided not to pursue a fourth trial. 2008 Racketeering Charges In August 2008, Gotti was arrested and indicted on racketeering and murder conspiracy charges brought in Florida. The charges stem from an alleged drug trafficking ring Gotti operated along with former associate-turned-informant John Allied, and with the murders of George Grosso in 1988, Louis Di Bono in 1990 and Bruce John Goddard in 1991. Prosecutors charged that the ring distributed at least 5 kilograms of cocaine in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Goddard's trial was later moved to New York, where he pleaded not guilty, and began in September 2009.In January 2008, Allied pleaded guilty to two murders four murder conspiracies, at least eight shootings, and two attempted shootings as well as armed home invasions and armed robberies in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania and Florida, stemming from his alleged involvement in a Gambino crew in Tampa, Florida. Allied agreed to testify in the trial of Gambino family enforcer Charles Carneglia, who was found guilty of four murders and is now serving a life sentence. He then served as a key prosecution witness against Gotti. During the trial, Gotti allegedly threatened Allied by mouthing the words, I'll kill you, and engaged in a shouting match with his former associate. After the incident, Victoria Gotti told the New York Daily News that Allied was a pathological liar, a rat caught in a proverbial trap, caught in his own lies. Ally testified that Gotti was responsible for at least eight murders, among other crimes. Oh, and December 1, 2009, the 12 jurors announced that they had failed to reach a unanimous verdict on all the charges and the judge declared a mistrial. After the trial, jurors said that they did not find witnesses, particularly Ally, to be credible. One of the jurors said, They should stop this now. It's ridiculous while another said, it's abusive. It's almost become a mockery. Gotti, Federal Bureau of Prisons Register No. 00632748, was released on December 1, 2009. After Gotti's fourth mistrial, federal prosecutors had indicated that they would not seek another trial against Gotti. In January 2010, the government decided not to pursue further charges against Gotti. Gotti Jr. maintains that he has since left the Gambino family, and in a 2015 interview with the New York Daily News, 
Gotti denied claims that he was an informant, claiming that he did give the FBI information but that it was false information and that no indictments resulted from the information he gave agents. In November 2013, Gotti was stabbed while breaking up a fight in Seoset, New York. Personal life In 1990, Gotti married Kimberly Albanese, daughter of Joseph Albanese, a flooring carpet installer. They have six children and live in Oyster Bay Cove on Long Island's North Shore. His son, John Gotti III, is a professional MMA fighter. Gotti authored a 2015 book, Shadow of My Father. Biographical Film In September 2010, Fiore Films announced that it had secured the rights from Gotti to produce a movie about his life, in particular his relationship with his father. According to Variety, several producers had expressed interest, but Gotti chose Fiore, a small, newly created production company. The movie, tentatively titled Gotti, In the Shadow of My Father, was to be directed by Barry Levinson. John Travolta was cast to star as Gotti's father, and Travolta's wife, Kelly Preston, played his on-screen wife, Victoria Gotti. Junior Gotti was played by Spencer Lofranco. The production of the film eventually lost Barry Levinson. On July 25, 2016 principal photography on the film renamed to Gotti had begun with Kevin Connolly as director. The film was released on June 15, 2018. On June 9, 2018, the documentary TV miniseries Gotti, Godfather and Son was released. References Further reading Mob Star, The Story of John Gotti by Gene Mustaine and Jerry K. Pesci in 2002, ISBN 0-02-864416-6. Capisi, Jerry. The Complete Idiot's Guide to the Mafia. Indianapolis. Alpha Books, 2002. ISBN 0-02-864225-2. Gotti. The Rise and Fall by Jerry K. Pussy in 1996, ISBN 0-451-40681-8. Shadow of My Father by John A. Gotti in 2015, ISBN 0-692-39588-1. External links John A. Gotti from John A. Gotti's official website Junior Gotti, Biography.com John Gotti Jr. from New York Daily News.